Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2017. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman, joined by Keith Townsend. Happy, welcome back to the program, a multi-time CUBE alum. Patrick Osborne, who's the Senior Director of Product Management with Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Patrick, great to see you. Great to be back, thanks for having me. Yeah, uh, what number of VMworld is this for you? Oh gosh, uh, it's, it's, I can't count it at this point, too yeah. many. Yeah, it's like I've been working with VMware for 15 years, it's the eighth one of these for me. Uh, Keith, I, I, I know you've been to, yeah. so what, what's your take so far, the, the, the show? You know, big ecosystem, you know, a lot of news going on. Uh, what, what, what do you think so far? Yeah, so I mean, from my perspective, uh, VMware has been such a huge ecosystem partner for HPE for forever. You know, uh, it covers everything from you know from uh, from our perspective on the compute, networking, storage side, certainly services. So um, you know, for me, it's always good to catch up with you know old colleagues and kind of understand what's going on in the industry. A lot of talk uh, today around. Uh, private cloud, multi-cloud, um, you know, what people are doing around automation, uh, you know, certainly a lot of things around software-defined, software-defined network, software-defined storage, so uh, a lot of great, good topics. Um, it's always good to see the customers here too as well. Yeah, uh, the, the joke a few years ago was VMworld became storage world. <laughs> uh, so, Absolutely. Uh, you know, in your space of availability and data protection, you know, on a walk through the show floor, yeah. uh, you know, HPE's got a big booth, but I see a lot of companies that are attacking different angles of that, yep. you brought up cloud being a, sure. You know, increasing piece. Uh, what, what's top of mind uh, for customers that are coming to you and uh, what sort of things are you working on these days? Yeah, so um, from our perspective on, on the storage and data management landscape, I think that you see a lot of vendors in this space right now. Uh, some of them are you know, certainly part of our ecosystem. You see folks like Veeam and you know, other folks that we partner with out on the floor. Um, there is an increased look from the customer perspective on availability. Um, it's the segments changing, the requirements are changing. I don't think people are tackling availability in the same way with sort of traditional data protection architectures. Um, so we see customers, especially uh, when they're looking for certain inflection points in their infrastructure, like I'm going to go to all flash or you know, deploy some new storage. They're definitely rethinking the way they're doing availability uh, from an application standpoint. So we're, uh, we're trying to you know, meet those market demands through our own technologies as well as having a pretty robust ecosystem here that we partner with. So a lot of talk, not just at this show, but at previous HP shows yep. about hybrid IT. It is obvious the data center isn't going anywhere for the majority of customers, sure. but we have the complexity of cloud. How does cloud impact practically data protection, data availability? Yeah, so uh, from our perspective, it's certainly an opportunity, right, to help customers out. Uh, we have, a, we've, you know, from a strategy standpoint, we've put a couple solutions and things into market that we hope address some of the use cases. So, you know, when you talk about nimble cloud volumes, right, being able to have your data in a co-located facility very close to, you know, public cloud, so you can do some compute arbitrage and ultimately be able to, you know, control your data. Um, and then we do other things, for example, store once cloud bank being able to back up to the cloud, which is a pretty established use case. Um, I think uh, for, for, from our perspective, helping customers make that move in terms of, um, you know, you can set up the data path and make the bits move, but uh, when we talk to mid-sized, especially large enterprise customers, the governance around that um, I think is really important in the, in the user experience to make sure that what you're sending out to the cloud is certainly protected, it's audited. Um, we even have customers coming to us, we just had a, uh, a big customer that you've had on here before, 21st Century Fox, right, a big customer of, of HPE talk last week about, I want to back up workloads that are in the cloud, to the cloud, right? There's not a lot of great tools for that today and I want that audited, I want you know, a, a paper trail around that uh, for their own internal you know, uh, capabilities. So I think there's a lot of opportunities in the space. It's very nascent. Yeah, Patrick, I think you bring up a great point. We were talking a lot at this show, kind of the multi-cloud world. It's, yeah. I, I've got my maturation of what's happening in my data center, deploying a bunch of SaaS, uh, I'm, on one or multiple public clouds, and there's certain things like security or you know data protection and availability. I need to get my arms around sure. all of it. Uh, HPE is looking to fill some of those you know gaps and help help customers. You know what's what's the overriding story, and you know how you're not 
you know, one of the big three public cloud providers. Sure. So why, why does HP have a position in this discussion? And maybe you can help us kind of round out that story a little. Yeah, so I mean, we have a position in that discussion because of, uh, you know, we are a very large infrastructure provider to a lot of customers, right? In terms of providing on-prem uh, hybrid IT experiences, you know, we from a from a public cloud perspective, you know, we don't uh, we're you know very sort of public in our strategy of not having a public cloud within HP, but we certainly partner with folks, I and mean, we've got a very long-standing partnership with Microsoft. Um, we you know come to market with uh, you know things like Azure Stack, and we have a number of integrations we do with things like Nimble, and um, in that area we resell you know Azure. Uh, from a, from a, from an HPE standpoint, so we're really looking to provide you know a full experience for customers um, in that space, and you know at the end of the day, we uh, you know like you said before, people are still going to buy and deploy in their data center, right? But they want to buy and deploy in their data center with the thought that. Um, you know, multi-cloud is going to be a possibility and they want to have infrastructure that's going to allow them to do that. So what we're doing is incrementally, in our product portfolio, I care about storage, right, is to be able to provide those experiences. I buy a three-par all-flash, I want to be able to tier that or back that up to the cloud. I have Nimble, right, I want to be able to replicate that to a co-located provider that provides Nimble cloud volumes and then assign compute to it from the cloud, right? So a bunch of things that we want to get customers ready for and make it easier for them. So can we talk a little bit more about that nimble story? Yeah. You know, the three par, we understand it. It, it is a, covers a, a, a great depth sure. of use cases in enterprise. Where does nimble fit in the strategy? Yeah. Um, so we are, we're super excited to have nimble in the portfolio for three reasons. They have, um, they have a great team number one, they bring a really good go-to-market engine and the sales team you know, with that, and they have great products. Uh, so from, from the product angle, which we're very interested in, is a couple different areas. Uh, InfoSight, predictive analytics, mm -hmm. right, is something that we want to apply to our entire product line hands down. So the things that they do around VM vision, right, with, um, with VMware, we want to apply that to 3PAR, right, uh, and you know, essentially give people the simplicity uh, that it takes to manage a, you know, a, a very large virtualized environment. Uh, they have a lot of things that they've done that are very unique. I mentioned Nimble Cloud Volumes before. That's a use case for primary storage, but can easily be extended to backup data protection, object storage, right? As, a, as, a, as not only just a technology provider, but as a way to price it and consume that type of storage. And then, um, you know, they also bring a number of uh, things around the, uh, in the availability space, which we find is very interesting. Secondary flash, right? So you think all flash as high performance, maybe a higher cost, right? Uh, but certainly it's going to help you with that application acceleration. They just, we just released the Nimble secondary flash array for workloads that are test dev, cloned workloads, you know, things you can automate um, and that you need some performance on it, but it's more performance than your backup storage, not as much cost and not as much storage as your primary. So think about secondary flash as flash for secondary workloads, very cost optimized more performant, maybe a little bit more expensive than your backup tier. So there's a lot of things that they bring to the table from a technology standpoint that we want to take advantage of. Yeah. Uh, Patrick, uh, HPE's got a broad portfolio, but still yes. to meet all the needs of the customers, especially in like the, the virtualization ecosystem, requires a lot of partnerships. Yep. Uh, where are okay, kind of the, the, the deep integrations that, that your team's been doing? Uh, where are the places where customers have been asking you to kind of pull things in? Any, any solutions that you want to highlight specifically? Yeah, so um, I think more and more what you start to see is uh, portfolio vendors like HPE, they bring great technology that we build you know, organically or that we go and acquire. Um, I think one of the big things that customers rely on us as well that doesn't get a lot of airplay is that we're bringing a vetted ecosystem to a customer. You know, so the whole kit and caboodle from compute, networking, storage, uh, services to bring that all together and an ecosystem that's supported and you know, we basically put the HPE stamp of you know, quality and support behind that. So you know, when it comes to VMware, obviously this has a huge ecosystem. So we do a lot with you know, innovating with VMware. I mentioned Nimble, um, VM Vision, things we're doing there to make uh, hypervisor environments uh, you know, quite a bit more easy to implement. 
uh, for customers from a storage angle. You talk to Jesse, you know, from from the SimpliVity standpoint. Uh, we do a lot around data protection uh, with uh, certain things um, with 3PAR and Nimble. So there's a lot of a lot of integrations that we do uh, in for VMware specifically, and then in other areas of the portfolio, especially automation, right? So we've got fully supported solutions. I think we got one of the best Docker implementations for storage with Nimble, uh, huge partnerships with Puppet and Kubernetes and Chef, all these great things around the automation side. So when we go out and partner with somebody, you know, we're, we're going to go provide a whole solution, a complete solution to a customer that's vetted, RAs, supported. So from, a, for, from my perspective, you know, partnering is actually one of the most important things we do at HPE. So, from a customer's perspective, HPE, usually important, key industry player for most CIOs. You yep. guys are still very, very trusted in that year. You have a huge ecosystem, huge portfolio. What should CIOs, CTOs, mm. high level architects, be focused on at this point? What's like the, the consistent theme that you're telling your customers you really need to pay attention to this part of the industry? So, I mean, from a corporate perspective, we've got a couple of things that we're, that we're working on, right? So we, you know, we talk about hybrid IT, right? Um, and that sort of transformation from, you know, I would call it established methodologies of application and development to, you know, sort of new style. Um, and we're definitely helping customers along, along that along that journey, and a lot of it is around bringing to this vetted portfolio and ecosystem along with the services. So the services, I think, is one thing that, um, you know, HP is very unique in the fact that we've got a very, very broad set of services in terms of, you know, we can go in and help CIOs and, and CFOs and, and CTOs understand, you know, where are you along that journey, right? all the way to implementation. I think one of the things that um, we're going to be very, very focused on over the next couple of years is providing everything in our portfolio as consumption-based pricing, right? So all the things that you like about the cloud, right? The things that are implied there are uh, elasticity, right? Agility, consumption-based, right? You're moving from a, a CapEx to an OpEx model, making that more predictable. So we want to be able to model that and provide those experiences. Um, definitely one of the things that we're really focused on at HPE is, um, is IoT and the, and the edge, right? So um, that's, that's a very fundamental part of our business that we're going to be looking at to make a lot of investments in big data. Certainly some of the assets around EdgeLine and Aruba and all the implications around security uh, for that. So those are, those are some, some of the key areas that we are, you know, where we talk to CIOs every day about. Yeah. Patrick, from, from an availability and data protection standpoint, yeah. what does something like IoT mean? I, I have to think, yeah. we're not going to yeah. store all the data, sure. lots of it's going to be just processed at the edge, we're talking a lot about edge, so I, I'm curious, what are the things that you're looking at, maybe start there, I think about like, you know, containers are a lot of times going to be something that yeah, is yeah, going to yeah. fit at that kind, of, maybe even serverless uh, at, at the edge, so, you know, I, I seem to think back, you know, when we talked about like, oh, we're going to go to object store, and therefore, the way I do everything changes, Sure. So, you know, what, what are we going to, you know, a couple of years from now, is this going to yeah. be a very different discussion? Or well, I think, it, yeah, next? it's, I, yeah. I think it's a, it's a, it's an interesting topic, right? When you talk about that volume of, of, of data, right, and the fact that it's very dispersed, right, being able to do, apply traditional availability techniques to something like that is, um, it's, it's difficult, it's next to impossible, right? So, um, you know, what we see is uh, customers buying in, in these type of ecosystems, you're not buying along horizontal lines, right? You're not buying a you know a specific server vendor or a networking vendor or a, you know a storage vendor, and then going best of breed and trying to integrate that yourself. A lot of these things are vertically oriented now um, in terms of you're buying a stack, you know, from from a, a portfolio vendor or or going to a service, you know, uh, an integrator. And I think with the volume of data that it takes to to do some of these implementations, so, so we we have very large customers, autonomous cars, um, you know, big. Uh, big uh, implementations of Hadoop and analytics. I mean, a lot of that stuff is built in. I think one of the things you're starting to see is that, that those type of deployments are outstripping or outpacing, you know, running away from the support of the traditional IT folks. Um, so we have customers that are operationalizing very large Hadoop clusters, for example. Um, 
who don't have methodologies for backing that up and replicate it. So I think there's a lot of technology that needs to catch up with some of these implementations. We see it all the time. So you know, I think there's different techniques from a technology standpoint. Um, you know, when we try to approach these from a customer perspective, we want to provide a full stack for for edge IoT. Um, and but you know, from a data protection availability standpoint, it's a, that's a difficult problem to solve. All right, well Patrick yep. Osborne, always a pleasure to catch up with yeah. you. Thanks for all the updates here. Looking forward to tracking some of those uh, you know, emerging areas that, that, that you were just Yeah, we look about. forward to talking to you guys in uh, Discover in Madrid. A absolutely, yeah. so the, the Cube, so many events. Uh, check out uh, siliconangle.tv, or actually thecube.net is where you're going to be able to see uh, everything. Nice shorter URL, uh, you know, keeps the branding of the Cube. Uh, for Keith Townsend, I'm Stu Miniman. Uh, stay with us, lots more coverage here, still to come, VMworld 2017. You're watching the Cube.